While many fans and creators are fighting for film to be more inclusive of women on screen, it seems many have forgotten those of us behind the camera. We all know that the film industry is a boys club, but when it comes to those creative choice roles, women still have hardly been able to break in, particularly in the highly visual role of cinematography. Women make up only 5% of cinematographers. These bleak numbers are especially concerning when you consider that this role is not just crucial to the process of creating a film, but they determine what we see and for how long. These are powerful jobs that have shaped the way we literally look at others. When film first started out, studios hired portrait photographers as the first directors of photography. As such, they were primarily men who already had a gendered way of lighting and shooting. As Keating stated, women were to be shot with many close-ups, diffuse lighting, and with some backlight to achieve a halo effect. This style intends to exhibit women's gentleness, while filming men utilize more shadows and low-key lighting, and portrait photographers rarely utilize close-ups for them. Now, with much more visibility for female filmmakers, we can see this gender difference continue. We all know that the potency and strength of the male gaze perpetuates the kind of media we've been seeing and the gender gap of creative lead roles, but it goes a little deeper than that. Choices cinematographers have made perpetuate the male gaze, training the eye to look at women as erotic objects. In this video, we will use Natasha Breyer's female gaze and how it affects the way we see the film. Breyer's work offers a plethora of ways to capture her subversion of the male gaze. Moreover, we will argue that women cinematographers provide a new perspective rather than a gaze that doesn't sexualize and objectify women in film. Nicholas Vinding Refn's most recent film, The Neon Demon, divided audiences. But what many can agree on is the film's beautiful cinematography. The film focuses on our society's extreme standard of beauty that continues to get younger. The interesting dilemma Breyer faces is how to capture the male gaze and its effects without taking away the actress's agency and objectifying her herself. Natasha Breyer's cinematography seems to take the guidelines of early cinematographers and subvert them. The main character, Jesse, appears doll-like, but powerful throughout the film. Breyer specifically chose camera lenses to create a porcelain look, and it's important to mention that Refn said he completely trusted Breyer's skills with light and on the camera, but chose to film the movie entirely in digital, at first for Breyer, and wanted to shoot mostly on tripod to create a photo shoot look. Otherwise, Refn gave her complete control and agency. During the runway scene, we get a different view of the main character, Jessie, who before seemed more like a deer in the headlights, as she's modeling on the catwalk for the first time. Despite it being about the fashion, the camera sees mostly on her face. However, the harsh contrast in colors and intensity of the lighting defies traditional gendered lighting techniques. And although backlighting is traditionally a feminine technique, the intensity of the light and the camera-like rhythmic flash removes the intended halo look and takes it to a sinister level. The lighting itself subverts expectations of how we see women, making Jessie look feminine and imposing. The harsh lines of triangular mirrors reinforce this imposing idea and for her to look as if she sees the viewer three times over. Jessie is the center in the frame, her head taking up a third of the screen. She looks directly into the camera, as if looking back at the viewer. Moving left and right, she kisses herself, as if knowing we are watching. This takes away the suspension of disbelief that a viewer can watch the film guiltless of their voyeurism, because Jessie sees that we are looking and can take back her sexuality. In this next scene where Jessie is asked to pose nude for the first time, she is alone in this room with the photographer when told to undress. There is traditional portrait lighting, which is normal for a photo shoot, and the lens flares on the camera suggest explicitness and intimacy because it obscures part of the shot. Jessie stays center frame until the photographer starts to paint her body. She moves away from the center. The most important aspect of cinematography here, despite all the traditionalism and the predatory situation, is that the camera never moves. The shot stays long on what happens here and does not pan, zoom, or move away. It stays still on the tripod. As a result, it does not allow us to join in with the photographer and sexualize its situation. Additionally, it does not allow us to ogle Jesse at all. Briar acts as an unobtrusive observer here. We see the situation for what it is. Creepy. With both of these shots from Natasha Briar's work in The Neon Demon, we can see what fellow cinematographer Zoe Thirsty said about female filmmakers in general. We take a direct view of subjects and ultimately of ourselves. Breyer's work reinforces Refn's intended message about the insane value we put on beauty. Breyer gives agency to Jesse, being what Darcy called the unobtrusive observer. We see things for what they really are through Breyer's lens, and subsequently look back at ourselves and what we might do about what is on screen. Cinematography is an extremely powerful visual tool to manipulate the eye to how we view the subject on screen. When the industry is dominated by men behind the camera and films their view of the world and how they want to see it, it becomes visualized for the rest of us. Then this view of those who are not the stereotypical male in Hollywood becomes other. These subjects who aren't portrayed properly soon influences how the rest of the population thinks they should be looking at these other subjects. Mulvey says, Film reveals straight socially established interpretation of sexual difference. Women are to be looked at and as a result, film has become inherently voyeuristic. Because the industry is controlled by men and patriarchal ideals, 
We have learned to read film as if we were all straight males. 